G'day, Hugh here from videsign.com.au, a design company based on the Gold Coast in Australia, and thank you for joining me. Today I thought we'd have a look at doing some portrait retouching and using Photoshop to do that. Now there's many, many ways you can retouch a portrait. I thought I'd go through a few basic uh, steps that I use to retouch portraits to uh, smooth skin and to create a much more uh, professional look to a portrait. And it's uh, using Photoshop, but only uh, a few simple methods that you could apply to your own portraits and uh, you'll get quite good results. So let's go into Photoshop and have a look how I do that. Okay, so here we have the um, here we have a portrait uh, shot with uh, with raw in the raw format. So it has been opened up in Camera Raw. So the first thing we'll do is uh, work on the crop. Now we'll do a few adjustments in Camera Raw and then uh, work on the skin itself in Photoshop. So I've kept the ratio to one to one for the purposes of this to keep it looking sort of. Uh, fairly straightforward uh, framing with not too much space either side but uh, you can see that she's leaning a fair bit back so we'll just want to straighten that up a little so that uh, sort of the, her arms are sort of parallel with the edge of the frame so we've done that through the crop tool so the next thing we want to do is is adjust the white balance and they you choose the uh, white balance tool if it just gives you an eyedropper and you can then choose a, an element of the photo that is, you know is white click on that spot and it will give you a, a white balance based on that value of that white that you've chosen and I might just uh, warm that up a little not too much though and that looks pretty good as far as um, a balanced balanced uh, white image goes okay so now we've uh, We've done that. Uh, what we want to do is set up our brush as our, our adjustment brush. Uh, so I think uh, what we want to have with this is uh, we need to zoom in on our our model first, uh, all the way to 100%. Use the hand tool to move the eyes and teeth into a relatively easy area to work. Okay, so now we're going to choose the adjustment brush and drop a pin in the white of the eye. Okay, so now we know that this is our white adjustment brush. So with that there, we're going to uh, reduce the uh, saturation and quite a, quite a bit to, to at least minus 50. And uh, what we're going to do there is work on you know the whites of the eyes and the teeth. So we'll bring the exposure up, probably not that much, uh, to around 25. Uh, we'll boost up the highlights a bit. And uh, what we want is, uh, we want the size, the brush size to be quite small. Uh, it, the feather around 67%. Uh, we want the flow to be at around 50. Uh, keep the density at 100. Now we want auto mask to be selected and uh, that will help us uh, not affect the other areas of uh, the eyes and the mouth uh, other than the whites that we're looking to work on. Okay so now we want to paint over both the whites of the eyes and the teeth. Uh, so that will remove the uh, remove the veins and any other imperfections that we might uh, want to reduce. So you can, just, you can see how that just just works on the whites of the eyes. You don't want to really go anywhere else. Just go for those veins. And really give the eyes a nice white look and the same with the teeth just 
just uh, gives them a nice white feel. Now we can select the mask here to see what effect areas have been affected and, and what haven't. And uh, we can add in bits that uh, we'd like to add a bit more of, of the white effect to. Uh, switch off the mask. Okay, so that's uh, that's the the teeth and the, and the eyes. Now, um, if we want to put the we want to refine this mask, uh, you can click on it uh, uh, so it re reveals where you've painted, and you can either click on erase to re remove it. From areas, let's say it gone into the into the irises, or onto the way up onto the lips, um, or you can have it still selected and change different aspects of 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 the uh, the the brush. But uh, I think that's going too far into the white, so we want to bring that back to where we were around 25. Now, if we return our our zoom, the fit and view. And uh, switch off the masks. Now, I think that looks fine. Uh, I was going to say it could be a little too white, but I don't know. I think uh, I think that's quite nice white eyes. Okay, so we're ready to hop into Photoshop and uh, do the next phase of the editing. Now what I could have done with that is done a little bit of work on the irises as well. Again, uh, use a, a, an adjustment brush, maybe add a little bit of uh, clarity and contrast and uh, boost the highlights. So why don't we do that? So we'll go back into Camera Raw Filter uh, and we'll zoom back in. And what we'll do is we'll zoom to 100. And we'll just focus on the on the irises, new adjustment brush, and uh, so we'll just uh, pump up the clarity a bit. In fact, we'll boost the saturation and the clarity, and add a bit of contrast. Just into the irises. So we'll brush it in first. And put the mask on so that we can see the areas that we're working on. Switch the mask off and uh, boost up that saturation. We'll focus in clarity. Add a bit of contrast. And we will darken them in a little. Really nice eyes. Okay, we'll say okay to that. All right, so now we want to work on skin. Now there's a few things that we can uh, we can do. Now I like to work on uh, imperfections first, and then work on smoothing the skin second. It can be done in various different ways, but uh, this is the way I prefer to do it. So we have got here our healing brush. You want it uh, to be a size that's going to work with the uh, the spots you want to replace. You want the mode to be replace, and you want the type to be content aware. Then all you do is click, and being content aware, Photoshop will remove various imperfections for you. Very powerful way of doing it. It really is uh, very easy. Now, I'm doing this by, to begin with, by just uh, clicking on specific spots. Now, I can make this tutorial go for a very long time and do a bit of work on hair. But I uh, don't think we have time for that at the moment. But what we do have time for is uh, 
just coming through this healing tool. Uh, so I'm going to make it even smaller, so that we really focus on in-depth spots. Now what um, what we've got in this photo is a lot of hair that is out of place. So what I was thinking was, it could be a very long tutorial if I remove all stray hairs, but we'll remove some. But uh, to do the whole a lot will take a lot of time. Uh, I could always speed up uh, the the video, but I don't really think we need to do that. Once you get the idea of uh, how this spot healing tool works and how it fixes up blemishes on the skin. All natural blemishes that uh, everybody has, from either from the sun or from freckles or moles. You can even remove tattoos. Uh, you can really, the world is your oyster with this. Uh, also, if you've got marks on your lens that you didn't realize you had, and they show up when you zoom in on a photo, you can remove all of them as well. So I'm just going doing a rough work, work on this at the moment uh, and I think I'm just about done for the purposes of this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is going to fit screen again and uh, we're going to zoom in and I'm gonna, just going to show some hair removal. So again using the same tool, uh, we'll make it a little bit bigger and uh, you just can basically trace down the hair you want to remove and it will be taken out. And then you can, if there's little remnants still there, you can just remove them out bit by bit. Now in this case, really there's a lot of hair coming down over the forehead, which we want to remove. Now if for some reason when you're doing this, you have a few strange looking results, which can happen, you can always use the clone stamping tool to stamp in a replacement. I don't really have anything uh, showing up here at the moment that I really want to replace. Now I can work on this for, for hours, sort of thing that you, you start doing and before you know it, two hours have passed by and you've removed every small spot and dot and freckle and hair that looks out of place. But sometimes that's what you're required to do. If someone has required, uh, asked you to, to take their photo and uh, you want to do a good job for them, uh, yeah, you've got to put the time in. But I know everybody's time is precious, so we'll keep moving on. Okay, so that, that's a lot of the uh, imperfections removed. So that's uh, job number one done. Okay, this is where it starts to get a little bit more technical. So we'll begin with um, working on the channels. So RGB, red, green, and blue, all the channels are selected at the top one up here. If we can isolate different channels uh, between red, green, and blue, and by holding down the control key and clicking on the thumbnail, uh, it will uh, highlight via selection the areas of each channel that are showing in the picture. So in this case, it's red. There's a lot of skin. Green is a fair bit of face as well. And uh, blue is a... I think we might go with... Uh, I think we will go with blue in this case. In, in this picture, we could choose any one of the, of the three. So you can see, and it's very subtle, but you know, it's, it's, it's slightly different. Uh, blue, in fact, I'm gonna go with red which is mostly just to do with skin, uh, a bit of hair. But uh, what we're looking for is, um, is highlighting of the skin. So now that we've decided to go with red, we can go Control, L, uh, control A to uh, select all, and Control C to copy. And then activate all, lay all channels and come back to our layers and add in a new blank layer and go Control V to copy that red layer into our new layer, and then go Control i to invert it. Okay, so that looks weird, doesn't it? What we want to do now is uh, change our blending 
mode to soft light. Again, that looks weird, but we've got a bit of work to do here before it uh, won't look weird. Hmm, a few more spots, but we'll uh, don't worry too much about them right now. Uh, we could uh, remove them all as we go. Okay, so now that we have got the uh, layer selected uh, and uh, we have changed it to soft light, what we want to do is uh, decrease the opacity of this. But uh, the easiest way to do that is come up into uh, is to add a new uh, layer mask. Come up to image and go apply image, and uh, have the uh, the blending mode set to linear light, and keep everything else as is, and say OK. And now we want to go Alt and uh, click on the th thumbnail and that will give us uh, an option to come up into Image, Adjustments, Levels and slide the left hand one across so that it's really only affecting the light areas. The darker you make it, the less areas it will affect. So it really is focusing in on the skin essentially. And then we'll click back on our layer and uh, we're right to go. Okay, so now we're going to smooth the skin out to a degree. So what we can do is we can uh, duplicate this uh, background layer and then drag it to the top, come up to filter, go to blur and go to surface blur. Keep that radius of 60 and a threshold of 30. Click on OK and it will take a little while to go through its paces depending on the speed of your computer uh, but uh, once that goes through its paces uh, it gets there eventually. Thinking, thinking, thinking and uh, we are now done. What we want to do now is uh, again duplicate this black background layer, move it up to the top this time go, come up to filter and go other and high pass of two pixels the radius and now we want to change the blending mode here to linear light now we're going to hold the shift key down make sure our top one is selected hold the shift key down and select the one below it so they're both selected right click in the empty space there and choose group from layers and say OK now we want to bring the opacity down to about 50% and you can see how much the skin has smoothed out already quite immensely and uh, now what we want to do is put on a layer mask so what we want to do uh, so this has affected everything so we just want to come back to the skin again so we hold the alt key down and click the layer mask below and just drag it up to our layer mask we've just put in. Okay, so now the skin has definitely has been smoothed out quite a lot through that process. Now we might just want to play around a little bit with the skin tone. So we come down here to a new adjustment layer and come to hue and saturation. Now we can choose our, our different colors to primary and secondary colors uh, and we'll go with the reds and uh, just bring down the red bring out the red a little and with the yellows increase the saturation a bit but we don't want to do too much with that and we'll bring it back to slightly warmer now what we want to do is we want to again copy the the mask up by holding alt and dropping it down and in this case we want to come to blending options and in the underlying layer again hold alt key down click on the the arrow there and bring it up to around around half so okay to that now what uh, we probably need to do is add a hint of contrast so what I'll do now is go control alt 
shift E and that creates uh, a new layer based on all the layers below so control alt shift and E so we're going to change the blending mode of this layer to soft light uh, we're going to reduce the opacity down to about half and we can put a layer mask on and we're going to drag that up in so that we can add a little bit of contrast there so that gives us a, a, a bit of a, a you know visible in the highlights but what we want to do now is uh, actually go control I to invert that mask so undo that and you can see uh, the effect it gives us uh, a much more appealing subtle contrast so that is quite uh, quite interesting so that's with the camera raw adjustments if we reset camera raw defaults so that's uh, I might even do this where we began and, uh, and that's where we're, we're ending up so you can see there's quite a, a big difference between where we started and now where we're at I'm just try and put them so you can see a comparison there uh, now if we were really wanting to go crazy we could uh, do a little bit more skin work just uh, bring this back here and what we're going to do is cancel this that was just to see how we were comparing so we could go again control alt shift e put a new layer up there and if you're really stressed about the skin I mean that is, is quite smooth now but you could uh, put a, a filter on uh, with a say a Gaussian blur of uh, probably around 1.5 pixels maybe 2 let's say 2 so then I don't know it maybe could be even more uh, it definitely added a bit of a softening to it so maybe we'll make it about 2.5 say OK to that. Now what we want to do is we want to put a reverse layer on again. Now uh, I did it before by clicking on a new layer and going Control I uh, but we can also do it by just going holding down the Alt button and clicking on the layer mask. And So it basically means that nothing is showing of this layer because it's all black but if we have white selected and choose a brush and we want to make it uh, sort of a size that we can work with we could then brush in that Gaussian blur that we have put on there to further smooth the skin the idea is not to have it too strong otherwise it looks obviously very very fake but enough to smooth out the, the skin overall and remove the shine that we have removed to a fair degree but this will just give that finishing touches to our model so again you can always work on uh, you know the opacity level as well to determine on how uh, much of this effect will show up so that's the uh, that's the tutorial. Uh, definitely has come a long way from the image that we started with. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed that, and uh, stay tuned for future tutorials. And until then, I'll see you later.